Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on the red pill itself? I, well, so <clears throat> it's funny when you have debates on this. Mm-hmm. The red pill itself mm-hmm. does not exist. What exists is an idea, a catalog idea, and you're using the red pill as a descriptor for this idea. Okay. That's all it is. So the idea, at least from my perspective of the red pill, is we want to know what is descriptively true before we make prescriptions for anything. Mm -hmm. Right? So let's start with what is descriptively true. The red pill says men and women aren't equal. That was the first thing I saw. And I was like, okay, maybe there's something here. Maybe there's something good here, right? A little pushback to egalitarianism. They also make other claims, too. They make claims about what women are attracted to, what they're not attracted to, what men are looking for, what they're not looking for. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get into kind of the sociology of the pairing of men and women. Yeah. From my perspective, almost all of the descriptors of the red pill line up perfectly with Christian ethics. It's when you get into prescriptions that we start having troubles. So, for instance, I know you're infamous for this, right? But the have sex with 50 women thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just so I make sure I don't get this position wrong, but I can give you like a counterexample of what I'm saying. Yeah, sure. Can you lay your position on that out? Why? Yeah. Okay. So I, we would agree, right, that um, the dating marketplace has changed. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Women have changed, right? They think they're equal to you, the egalitarian thing that we talked about before. So since the dating marketplace has changed significantly and women have more sexual experience now than ever before because they think they're men and they can have sex and have relationships just like men, etc., and be promiscuous and not deal with the same ramifications. Um, what guys have to do is kind of go in and understand how women operate in today's day and age. And I think a, a good way to do that, right, obviously there's a multitude of ways, but one way to do it is obviously to have experience so that you're not getting into a relationship or a situation with a woman and you're not aware of her nature and you don't know how to deal with it. I kind of like, I yeah. like to use the analogy all the time. If you know you got a boxing match, right, in five years, right, with a very good and skilled opponent, well, what are you going to do? Are you going to play video games the whole time or are you going to train and get ready for the biggest fight of your life, which I look at as marriage because so it makes you, you worldly. Everything. Makes you worldly. Yes. Right? And yeah. It, yeah. I, 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 think, I think we don't disagree that that's true. Yeah. The Christian ethics pushback to this would of be. Of course. But wait, you want, this is a requirement or something which is helpful to make you a high-value man. Yeah. Well, this in turn would give this hoe value. <laughs> but I don't determine a guy's high-valueness from um, having sex with a lot of girls. I think a, man's, a man being deemed as high status or high value is from his effort and his merit that he develops on his own, and then the sure. women are byproducts. But he has experience now, and experience is going to help him be high-value, right? I wouldn't attribute him being because there's guys that are high value that don't get girls. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, uh, yeah, like yeah, like they're successful, they're smart, they're ambitious, etc. But they don't get girls. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe they don't go out enough. Maybe they don't care to. Oh right, right. Uh, yeah, but they're yeah, more yeah. likely to get them if they want them, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah they're in a better position. Yeah, they're, because because it's a byproduct. But my thing is, your your value as a man is not attributed to the amount of girls that you have sex with. I just think it's a be- it allows you to be a better test of care. You're you're be- you're better able to assess the character of women when you've dealt with them before so that you don't get finessed out of the value that you created. But wouldn't the entailment of that be that you're high value? Like the entailment of I have X amount of experience that helps me with my value. Like that's a that's going to be a portion of that. And so so kind of the the rebuttal that we would have is we would say, okay, maybe I, that's- I just don't attribute a, a, like a man's sexual experience to him being high value i think it helps him with assessing um a partner a partner Mm -hmm. but but i don't but but him being high value is completely independent of having sex with a lot of girls i think the women are a byproduct of his success okay so he so he is successful yeah it's easier for him to get these checks yes right and i think if he's gonna go ahead and partake in women he should have some experience is what i think especially when he's higher value and he has a lot to lose but I'm not going to sit if so if I take two guys, right? Mm-hmm. One guy is making, you know, one guy is wildly successful, et cetera, and another guy's wildly successful. One has a partner count of a thousand, the other one has a partner count of zero. To me, they're still both high value. Just one chose to use his value to attract way more women than another. But would you make it a prescription then? Would you tell men you should do this? It's good for you to do this. I think if you're going to go and be marriage-minded and try to find a girl to take seriously, you should have some experience. Then that has to add to the value. I don't think so, man. I don't, because, I because don't see how. Value, if you're saying you want this thing, yeah. and this thing is to get married yeah. to a high-value woman, right? 
to somebody who you consider to be virtuous and good mm -hmm. and this type of thing, right? Mm -hmm. If you're saying that having sex with a multitude of partners is then going to up your chances of being able to do this thing, to accomplish this thing, then it, it I don't see how it's not attributing to the value. I, I, I completely... Uh a man's value in him having sex, I, they're independent to me. Okay. I, I look at, like, you can be a virgin as a guy and still be a high-value dude, yep. is how I look at it. Mm -hmm. I think the women are just a byproduct of your value. But I mean, it is a prescription that you would make? If you're, um, <coughs> your prescription as far as, oh, the 50 girls. Yeah. Yes, but you can be high-value and not take that prescription. Right, my but point. you must see some value then in prescribing it. M more, and the value is from protecting your value. Does that make sense? Sure. So like, yeah, 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 that yeah, totally yeah. makes sense. The value, yeah, the value but, is you protecting your value, but you don't need the women for that value. Right, but I think that it, here's the entailment. Yeah, sure. So if you're prescribing, mm -hmm. have sex with 50 women, mm -hmm. okay, um, this is your prescription because, and the prescription has value, then whatever the hoes are that they're sleeping with, that's an entailment. So the hoe has to have value. Not necessarily. Well, you could call them like pawns. I mean, they would be necessary for you to s sleep with 50 women, right? No, because, not necessarily because what ends up happening, because a lot of the girls, let's be honest, they'll be bimbos, stupid chicks, mm -hmm. idiots, morons, lower class, lower status women. But maybe. necessary for you to sleep with so that you can, right? I it's mean, like if you, you can, can get that by, prescription. if you can get by, right, with less, mm -hmm. sure. But I think a decent barometer is 50 in today's day and age mm -hmm. because it will put you in a position where you'll experience a multitude of different girls with different personality types, different behaviors, different yeah. red flags, different green flags, etc. So you'll have a general rubric of like, okay, these girls that go to the club all the time probably aren't good. I've dealt with like three of them now. Okay, these girls that are go to soror that are from a sorority and yeah, maybe not so good. So like, you kind of have an idea of like, all right, this is you get a generality of things. Well, so to like the olive branch, yeah, uh, the meeting you halfway. I would not say for a second that the more sexual experience you have and the more worldly you are, that you're not going to have experience in dealing with worldly women. There's no doubt. Or yeah. women who aren't worldly. Yeah. You're still going to have experience in both. But all I'm saying is that I think it's a logical entailment to say, I'm going to prescribe that you go sleep with, let's say, let's just say it's 20, right? It doesn't even have to be 50, okay. 15, 10, 5. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You and I both know the types of women those guys are going to be sleeping with are going to be easy women. And they're going to be low-value women. They're basically going to be hoes. So if that's the case, that the hoes are who they're going to be sleeping with, then we have now entailed that hoes have to have value or else you couldn't sleep with them. Mm. I think it's kind of a – I mean, I think all women have inherent value, though, even hoes. Yeah, because, that's because, what because, I'm because, saying, because, though. Because, because, like, all, all females have some type of value because, like, because they just, they're women. Mm -hmm. But as far as, like, attributing that value to yourself and making taking her serious, I think that's a different thing. So you got to figure out which ones are, you know, <clears throat> worth a relationship right. and which ones aren't. And I think the way to do that is through, obviously, experiencing Now, from them. our view, from the Christian ethicist view, sure, they have no value. They only have human value. Okay. But they do not have, I would consider them at the lowest end of the- If they're not virgins, like what? Of the value, of the value hierarchy. Women who are very promiscuous and okay. they see sex as, Fair. they see sex as a tool mm -hmm. or as a utility or as a manipulation device or things like this, uh, instantly uh, the, the Christian ethicist is going to look at this and say, this is completely sinful, needs to stop, you're totally valueless, yeah, fair. right? But your humanity is still very valuable. You as a person is still very valuable. Your salvation is really important to us. Yeah. yeah. But your sinful, your, this type of sinful behavior from our perspective is completely degradating to society, and we need to stop it by almost any means necessary because what ends up happening, it's like an enclosed system. What ends up happening from my perspective is that degeneracy leads to degeneracy leads to degeneracy leads to degeneracy. Okay. And there never seems to be a pull back. Mm -hmm. It's always a push forward. I mean, we're talking about shit now. You guys couldn't even imagine what we're talking about now with like transferies and all this different stuff, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. You couldn't have even fathomed <laughs> that. that. You call that's, a, that's a new one. Now, could you have even fathomed that this would that we would be talking about child genital mutilation? I mean, who yeah. would ever have envisioned yeah. that this would be the world we live in? Yeah, it's crazy. But if you back it up, if you look at kind of the slippery slope argument, quote unquote, mm. this started with an LGBTQ push for equality, mm. and the next, and once they have it, you have nothing else to complain about. 
You have to move the goalpost to the next victim group. Yeah, then yeah. you have to move the goalpost to the next victim group. Yeah. And it becomes more and more and more absurd. And that's why you'll see the pendulum eventually is going to swing back the other way by necessity. Mm-hmm. If, if I may, we're not arguing on a, I want to say, religious standpoint. It's more of a logical standpoint. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's be honest here. You yourself, if you weren't versed in women, you can choose for yourself the wife you have today, right? Yeah, that's true. So on some level, we do need to have women as, I won't say pawns, because I said pawns earlier, that's kind of <laughs> wrong. I would say as, I want to say, an experience booster to understand what I really want in my life or what I actually need. So I think on some level, you still need to have that like experience as a man, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, um, I definitely see your um, the Christian view. viewpoint. in the And I think all religions pretty much have, whether it's Islam, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Judaism, uh, Christianity, they're all pretty much, hey, like sexual degeneracy. It's not in our best interest here from a religious standpoint, which I completely understand, which yeah. that's why I'm, I'm when I dispense this advice, it's more from a uh, strategical it's, it's a strategic standpoint of, OK, if you're not a religious guy, et cetera. Right. Mm-hmm. Most women are not religious. Right. They're just not. Unfortunately, most people are secular in today's day and age. So I look at it like, OK. If even you, the religious, huh? <laughs> even the religious. Yeah, are more secular. yeah. Th- there you go. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, you know, even uh, so, my thing. I look at it like, okay, though religion is great, and I think it's a great framework for people to operate in. Unfortunately, we don't have those like training wheels anymore. So, I think like for guys to really like move in this new sexual marketplace, where like you said before, these girls a lot of the times are fucking three hundred fours. How's a guy that's been a virgin his whole life, super devout, you know, has the rose colored glasses on, doesn't know how women really move in today's day and age, how's he going to be able to tell if a girl really likes him or she's just selling him a dream, like, oh, I'm pure, etc. Like, he'll, he won't know. Right now, of course, thank God, there's content like this right. where we might be able to curb him having 50 bodies and he might be able to only do 20, 30, 40. He might not need the full 50 because we're telling him, hey, this is what it is, right? Our they voice, always say a smart yeah. person learns from their mistakes, a wise person learns from other per- another person's mistakes. Yeah. Hell, on this show, we tell you guys our mistakes all the time. So people maybe are, with all this information, they're able to curb it, right, and learn from an earlier standpoint. But a lot of guys, what I've noticed is a lot of guys are stupid. Let's just keep it a thousand. They got to fucking burn their hand on the kitchen stove to, to figure out that it's actually hot. Um and that's what uh, that's why I, the information is usual. It's like for the general masses. Are there smart guys out there that will figure this shit out with less? Of course. Um, but I think for most guys, especially as hard-headed guys, with 50 chicks under your belt, man, you should at least be able to figure out the girls that are worth a relationship versus the ones aren't. And then most importantly, the girls that are trying to sell you a dream of, oh, I'm pure, et cetera, and you, you find out that they're a 304. I have a question, Andrew. How would you solve this issue? Solve the Issue problem of men finding oh, man. this is, wives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this, is, your, uh, this yeah. is pretty. This <laughs> is pretty complex. Okay, yeah. so so I, our adaptation is kind of like for today's day and age. If you're not yeah. like a religious guy, but what's your yeah? So yeah. So so it. backing it off. Um, I'm not gonna get, let you guys get away totally with this. So I'm bringing it back. <laughs> okay, okay. Sure. it's not a diversion, sure. but I'm bringing it back. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. sure. Okay. So um, from a secular perspective, mm-hmm. it can't be fixed. From a secular perspective, okay. it can't be fixed. Sure. Secularists okay. have no moral foundation at all like it or not they don't they and it it really can't be fixed however what i can point to is this let's assume for a second hypergamy is real right i assume that it is i think uh i I think generally speaking there's enough evidence that we can look at and we can say hypergamy is pro at least it's real enough yeah right it's real enough agreed it used to be under control it used to be under control. Yeah, yeah. Religion used to put under like control. Like it or not, yeah. we had that shit under control yeah. and under lock and key. Religion, and that, shame, mm-hmm. families, fathers, yeah. all these things used to combat yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Secularism destroyed all that. I agree. And so I agree. When, I, when I say to people, and I understand the argument, we're never going back to that, but we are. We are going to go back to that, and I'm going to explain how. It's not going to be in our generation, but if you look at the birth rates, the global birth rates, they're in massive rapid decline, and it's a problem most people have no idea about yet, Mm -hmm. how bad the population collapse is really going to be. It's very bad, especially the Western countries. But you know these stats. What age are women on average now getting married? Into their late 20s, 30s now. 30 is the average age, right? I think it's 31 is the average age last time I looked. How many kids are you going to have as a 31-year-old woman? Very few. Very few. Yeah. (laughs) Well, these women are becoming quicker and quicker genetic dead ends, but so are secularists in general. If you look at re- the religious, the religious reproduce far and away more than secularists reproduce. 
Cross-generationally, this is going to become worse and worse and worse. As people leave the Protestant churches, they're moving towards Catholicism, Orthodoxy, more traditional churches. Mm -hmm. There's big pushes in those churches to have families and to have children and to reproduce. You know, Catholic, you, you know the old um, you know adage for Catholics, right? You know, they, if you don't have ten kids, you have no kids, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Reproduction is the future. Yeah, the religious reproduce, and secularists are not reproducing. They're that's becoming, why London is taken over, been taken over by Muslims. That's right. right. That's yeah. right. And if you look at you know we we I'll only touch on this very briefly, but even if you look at Israel, uh, Israel is the only Westernized nation that has a reproduction rate that is stable. It's mm. actually over what is necessary because they took one look at it and went, okay, we got to get these numbers up. How are we going to do that? So they implemented an in vitro fertilization program for free for the entire nation. Really? Yeah, yeah. for the whole nation. An okay. in vitro fertilization. You can go have it done 12 times and they'll pay for everything. Interesting. In order to keep those numbers up. Okay. Because they, they look around, they're like, we're surrounded by, yeah, by yeah, everybody, yeah, right? That, yeah, it makes we sense better, why they would do it. We better have a future <laughs> army, right? We better yeah, have a future yeah, army. Yeah. But the West has not rung, you know, rang the alarm bells just yet. They're just now talking about it in Congress. Yeah. But then what's another side effect of that? Your domestic population is not reproducing. How do you keep the number at 330 million? There's only one way to do that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's going to be with immigration coming in. Yeah. And, well, that creates instability all, all on its own. And problems. then what happens if you start pulling in immigrants from other nations and they have a reproduction crisis? Yeah. All right? So if you if you look at all the downsides of, of a coming population collapse, you can see that religion's going to make a pretty heavy comeback. And you so? see it okay. already being fought about now. Secular ethics can't offer people anything. It can offer them only hedonism. But ultimately, it can't give people purpose. It just says, go find your own purpose. But what the hell does that mean? That doesn't mm -hmm. help anybody. Mm -hmm. How does that help people to tell them, well, just go find your own purpose? Like, well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to find purpose, right? Yeah. That's why I came to church for, is to find purpose. Yeah. Secularists can't provide that. So I agree with you, Andrew. I think in the future, things will change. However, mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. what do you do? Well, so right now, you should try. I, I mean, this is me again. Mm. If I look at the historic trends, most men were never able to reproduce anyway. Okay, some 60, 70 percent. Yeah, they were never able to reproduce only a minority ever. That's why we have double the female ancestors to male ancestors. Right. I would still say that the best thing that you can do is to try to live an integrity filled life. And that at the end of that life, regardless of how it went. Right. Maybe you didn't get that hedonistic pleasure that you wanted. Um, but neither did your ancestors. They didn't get that either. Mm -hmm. And I think hypergamy has always been this thing, this this issue, and that women have been this way. We have Helen of Troy to look at. We have Samson and Delilah to look at. We we know that this is the nature of women. But yeah. We also know that most men were never able to reproduce, yeah. ever. And most of the women that we have right now, if we have men going out and turning out hoes, if we have them going out and turning out hoes, doesn't that hurt the future men, you know what I mean, who want to get, uh, lay down and marry these women, if we're going out and turning them out? That seems like it's counterproductive to me. I see your perspective. I could also argue, though, they've already been turned out. <laughs> like, 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 no, they're already there. They're already made. Yeah, well, I mean, holes. there had to be a ground zero. There was a ground zero penis well, somewhere. Remember, you mentioned feminism <laughs> yeah. and the culture itself, the music. Yeah. Yeah. They did all the work for them. Yeah. We just come in and, hey. Well, I mean, he said it earlier. Like, mm -hmm. if you're going to continue to stay secular, it's, 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 it's never, which never. I agree. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's never. And that's why I kind of, why because I'm looking at it like, okay. Because I, I, I see, um, and I want to actually ask you what, how you think it'll go back to being a religious state, but let's assume that it's not, right? Let's mm -hmm. assume that people are going to continue to live free and woo, secularism, etc. I'm looking at it like, okay, there are guys out there that want a family. There are guys out there that want to one day, because I think the nuclear family is the backbone of any society, any thriving society. As a matter of fact, the reason why we're so fucked up now is because we don't have a lot of nuclear families anymore, right? When I was in UAE, for example, I saw strollers everywhere, families together, etc. I don't see that here. Hell, even in Miami, I see people walking dogs more than walking with kids. Yeah. So, um, the little so, dogs too. Yeah, the little, little ones too. The weird dogs, ones. Yeah. So I say, I say all this to say, I say all that to say this: for the guys out there that do want a family one day, etc., and I don't want them to get destroyed by the divorce machine, right? I'm like, okay, you want a family, you want a wife. This is very risky in 2024. With the way women are programmed, yeah. right? So, I think one way to deal with it is to have experience with them, and so you you can at least rule out the bad ones. 
I'm not telling you to find the perfect girl, but at least be able to rule out the bad one so that you can have a family with a chick and she won't destroy your life. But what if That's the only reason. What if there's a better way in marriage, though? Sure, go ahead. What about covenant marriage? Okay. What about using covenant marriage and the ecclesiastical authority of the church to govern the marriage where you actually have communities? One of the big things that's missing from— Can you explain that to me? Because yeah. I'm not Christian, so— From your—so, well, is, Islam has their own form of ecclesiastical authority. They, they wouldn't call it that, okay? But mm-hmm. in Muslim nations, they have uh, Sharia law. Sharia courts will actually adjudicate marriages. They'll adjudicate all sorts of things from the religious authority. Yeah. Christians have always had this. We've always had an ecclesiastical authority. The Catholic Church has it. The Orthodox Church has it. The ecclesiastical authority is a way to uh, govern your life and govern your marriage, exit the state. Uh, And you can enter into a covenant marriage, and they do not just let you go. They do not just release you from your vow. And if you have community pressure, that's the social shame you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. What's what's going on right now? I'm a fan of marriage without the state involved. I've talked about this. And you should be. Yeah, yeah. Because what's happened instead is we have traded— a good ecclesiastical foundation with community for this crazy ass contract where it's easier to break than a cell phone contract. Yeah. And women have all the incentive in the world to, to break it. it. Yeah. Why in the world would we ever uh, endorse from a Christian perspective to get involved in a secular marriage? That's the worst idea on planet Earth. We should be recommending covenant marriages through the church, governed through the church, and those communities, your own community. Gotcha. That's where you get the social shame. That's where you get the pressure. Yeah. That's where Because right now, if you go and you involve yourself in a secular marriage, you go to the courthouse, you get married tomorrow. Yeah. Where's the community? Yeah. Where's the support structure? Maybe maybe your family, maybe not. TikTok. Yeah. You know, it's just you and her against the world. That's insane. It is. You know what I mean? You have children, you have financial woes. You gotta have a community. Yeah. You know? Well, there's a reason why the, the phrase it takes a village to raise a child, that's why. Mm-hmm. Because and and shame is a very powerful thing. And I agree with you, because we've talked about this if you're gonna get married. We always tell guys, if you're gonna get married, do it through don't make sure the state's not involved, mm-hmm. right? Go if you're a Muslim, go ahead and just get mar- married at the mosque. Or by the church. I, uh, or, or by the church. I wasn't aware what's it called? Ecclesiastic? Yeah, the basically by the church, basically. Yeah. The okay. Church. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Uh, okay. So yeah. um And if you have marital problems, you go to the church. Yeah. And I think that's a fantastic way to mm-hmm. get around it. You know what I mean? Um And you should. Yeah. In in I mean if you look at the most successful marriages mm-hmm. in the United States, you want to know what some of the most successful ones are? Mormon marriages. <laughs> For sure. Why? Yeah. The Mormons have their community. own church authority and community yeah, that applies community. significant social pressure. They're like, no, you don't get to just do do your husband like this. You don't get to just do these types. Of, oftentimes, they don't even involve the state at all. Yeah. State's not even that you get married within the community in yeah. the eyes of God because that's what marriage is. Marriage has nothing to do with a state contract. Yeah. The state should only be involved in things which are good for the entirety of the nation. Marriage is now not good, and that's terrible. That's an awful position to be in, to have the state promoting something as toxic as marriage through the state now is. It's a raw deal for men. It's a bad deal even for women, ultimately, Mm -hmm. because they have the incentive to do it, and then they seem to regret it. They they take years of regretting this, and it's like, if we're going to change this, fine. But let's actually move towards that, towards actually changing these laws, actually moving against the laws. And where the trad cons get it wrong is they refuse to engage with the red pillars saying, listen, we're getting destroyed. Men are just getting destroyed out here. They're getting wrecked everywhere, right? Mm-hmm. And you hear their stories over and over again. And I see these guys in the Daily Wire. They're like, well, you could get lucky. <laughs> you could, you, you might get lucky. One of these days. I got lucky. Look at me. I got lucky. Yeah. Look at look at, look at at here. He got lucky too, yeah. right? Well, that's stupid advice. Why would you ever give advice like that? Instead of looking at the problem objectively and saying, look, there's really nothing inside of our religious purview that says that we shouldn't be pushing back against state authority for marriage Mm -hmm. since we consider it to be, uh, you know, in the eyes of God, not in the eyes of the state. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's what we should be pushing for. That's what the traditional conservative side is supposed to be pushing for. Religious institutional marriage, forget the state. Totally worthless. Well, so if we're doing that, then I look at it like, okay, well, let's say you make a bad mistake. Let's say you don't have the 50 body count. You got five, mm-hmm. right? Or maybe you're a virgin. You get married to a chick. You didn't know that she was a 304 before. Mm-hmm. And then she goes ahead and, you know, breaks up with you and, you know, breaks your heart and shit like that. Well, at least you can get out of it now where you don't owe a bunch of money That's right. to her or whatever it may be. That's one way. But, you know, again. It's also when you have a church backing you. Right. That's yeah. a heavy force. People forget the institutional power and community power churches of have course, and of community shame is brutal. Yeah, it is brutal. And you have some churches 
they have, I mean, serious institutions. It's the last institutional authority of the right, and we don't use it for anything. Yeah, yeah. And that's and that's why, like, my thing is, I'm a because when I give my advice, I'm like, all right, I'm assuming they're not Christian, they're not devout, they're not, they're gonna get with a chick that isn't Christian, not devout. They're secular, etc. So I'm like, okay, that's how most young people identify yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Right. We don't live in a Christian society anymore, unfortunately. Right. We do not. We don't. Um, so I'm looking at it like, okay, this is how you deal with the new normal. Is it optimal? Should you be running out there and trying to fuck 50 girls in general? Well, no, because it. it well, yes and no, because chasing after girls. I've always said this. Going after women inevitably puts you in a situation where you're not fucking productive. You're fucking texting girls all the time. You're going out on dates. You're going to nightclubs. Mm -hmm. You're you're you're, you're spending money and alcohol, resources. Spending money, yeah. You're spending resources. Like the pursuit of women in itself is extremely labor intensive. So, um, so yeah, it, it's it's annoying. But like I look at it like I'd rather you do this work up front, know how women are, then. You do all this work, make yourself high value, then you have the time finally to go ahead and date, and then you go ahead and you date, you find a girl, she's really a whore, but she sells you a dream, you go ahead, you get married to this girl, and then bam, next thing you know, state's taking half your money. But with what you said, okay, we're getting married only through the church, or through a mosque, mm -hmm. or whatever, and you are not incentivized to leave me. Right. Well, I could, I could, I could, I could meet in the middle ground there because the guy isn't going to be destroyed. But knowing that most guys are going to do what? Their dumbass is going to go to the church. Sure, I'll go ahead and sign here, <laughs> so you can have half the money because I'm an idiot. Because yeah. that's what most fucking guys are going to yeah. do, right? Um, it depends on what we're pushing them towards. Yeah. So know? if they're going to do that, right, and go through the, the what? Because because let's be honest. A lot of modern day women, they, they won't accept getting married just by the church or just by a mosque. They want the security yeah. that comes with but wouldn't that be a, a red flag? Manner. It, that's true. But wouldn't that, that would be, be the red flag where you're like, wait, you won't get married to the church? I thought you loved me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're right. But there's some, but there's some, but uh, dude, see, the thing is, is that we're having a higher IQ conversation here at the table because we're able to understand this. Yeah. Most guys are fucking idiots, man. Let's keep it a thousand. They're fucking idiots. They're like, pussy, pussy. Yeah. Okay, I'll sign the contract. I'll sign the contract. <laughs> like, it's crazy the things that guys will do for women. It's fucking scary, man. Like, when I do some of these consultations with these guys, and they say what they've done for women, etc. And, and looking back to, like, I'm an idiot, 2020 hindsight now, etc. But... When you're in love with a girl or you don't know better or whatever, like these guys really put themselves in very dangerous situations with these women. So I'm like, fuck, like if you guys are going to do this and sign your life away and go to a, go to a courthouse and marry this chick that you know has all these red flags, like, God damn, at least have some experience, man, before you go into the slaughterhouse. So that's how I look at it. But I agree with you, man. If we can go back where guys can go ahead and get married through the, um, the church or the mosque and there's no incentive for the woman to leave them. Yeah, fuck yeah. See, the other, my only other pushback then, okay, really, sure. is when I think, because you, you and I both know, probably all of us today will know, like, high value man is kind of a nebulous term. Mm -hmm. Don't know exactly what that means, but I think, very her, nebulous. I think heuristically we know. Yeah, right? It's very nebulous. So we can be like, you know, a guy purports himself well, has enough money to take care of himself, handles his responsibilities, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think we kind of know it when we see it. Yeah. And so I think that's fair. But when I think of high value, too, I institute things like virtue. I think of virtues. I think of integrity, virtue, virtue ethics. Those are the things that I would consider to be high value as well. Some stoicism thrown in there, maybe. Okay. Um, All right. The only, the only drawback, even for secularists, because you can get secularists to move towards virtue ethics. They may, not, they may reject God. They may reject religion. But they will act as though religion is real if you give them some foundation like virtue ethics. And so the only drawback I really see, uh, even from the secular side of telling them, hey, this will make you worldly, that's going to hurt their virtue. That's going to ultimately hurt their virtue to basically kind of man whore around, right? And that's something that later in life, reflectively, when they're 40 or 50, they might look back on and be like, hey, look, you know, that was, that I was not living a high integrity lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when it comes to, uh, so, so your pushback is with uh, uh, because it l lacks the virtue is what you're saying? Yeah, there's no virtue in promiscuity for men or women. I think you would agree with that even as a secularist, that you, you said yourself um, sleeping with a ton of women yeah. in and of itself is not a virtuous act. Maybe you think it's neutral, right? But it yeah, certainly has neutral. no virtue. Yeah, no, no, I agree. But for women, right, it has a really bad side effect that yeah. it doesn't even have for men. Um and because of the gatekeepers of sex, there's even less virtue. I agree. Right? I agree. But it takes two to tangle. And yeah. so anybody who's going to have sex with one of these women, they're going to be taking away from the virtue of themselves and the woman. And for me, if I when I look at men of status, mm -hmm. real men of status, yeah. 
who maintain their virginity. Like I met a, a gentleman named Mason uh, when I was on whatever. Dude, square jawed, real strong guy. He maintained his, you know, his virginity. He didn't seem like he was unaware of female nature to me, but I can understand that probably plenty are, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But he seemed like a really virtuous guy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And there is some kind of integrity to that, that when you meet a man who has tons of virtue, you'll follow him off a building, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think, I think that, you know, keeping virtue intact is another thing which in Western society we should be pushing towards. Understandable. Even from a secular framework, that seems to be more optimal. You know what I mean? Understandable. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, that's obviously ideal. Um, I just think with the way things are, for a guy to be able to find that virtuous woman, he's got to deal with some women that aren't virtuous. And the only way he's going to do that is through experience. I'm, I'm looking at it more from like a... Uh, preventive, a preventative standpoint where it's like... Well, it's, pragmat it's pragmatic. Yeah, right? for, for in today's day and age, right? Yeah. Um, if women weren't the way they are now, I would tell guys, stay a virgin. Yeah. Like, fucking wait, man. Like, you know, it, it, you know, exercise that, um, exercise that discipline. But nowadays, with just the way women are, it's like you almost get punished for being that nice guy and being extremely virtuous and nice to these girls because... They don't reward that anymore. Like chivalry is dead, and I genuinely think yeah. women, modern day women, killed it. So it's like, though I think that's optimal and the best way to go about it. I just don't think it's practical or pragmatic in today's day and age. It's my only issue. Well, I mean, the problem is there's a lot of truth in what you say. Yeah. And so you know, I'm a firm believer in accepting what is objective reality. It yeah. is objective reality that promiscuity inside of Western nations is now out of control to the point where reining it back in seems like almost a fool's errand. But I also think that if we can, if we can provide any pushback to move it the right direction, we should. Yeah, yeah. I mean, though, and, and now I'm actually like, you know, brainstorming here how we would do that. The only way we would do it is, yeah, you would have to make a religious state to do it because, quite well, at frankly, least, at least give a religious option. Right, and let the religious govern it as synergy. So, because, so the nations of old had a synergistic relationship. Yeah, that was not that the state was run by the church, just that the state worked with the church. Yeah, why should the state govern marriage? So you're you're not a fan of separation of church and state then? Uh, well, not a separation. I think though that we should not necessarily live in a state which is controlled by the church, mm -hmm. but has a synergistic relationship. Okay, your population needs to have some moral foundation. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't have people, who, you know, even patriotism itself mm -hmm. used to be a big deal in the United States. Right. Yeah. Um, that was a unifying force. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of propaganda towards patriotism. Mm -hmm. Right. It was everywhere. Yeah. There was American flags and, you know, the patriotic messaging was everywhere. And it's a subtle form of brainwashing, which yeah. unifies people through an ideology. Yeah. Religion does the same thing. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. And it's like if you can push any kind of synergy with the church you don't have to make the but make how it. would we get the young people to do that because my, my thing is you know so i i see your perspective yeah. and i see your vision i like i agree with you that religion absolutely curbs a lot of this bullshit mm -hmm. the problem is how are you going to get the young